We were just talking about last year already, December. I mean, who remembers December way back in last year? It was all the way last week, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, yeah. but I think Jacob's going to remind us what happened and why it happened. It was yeah. a December to remember, <laughs> yes. maybe for the wrong reasons if you're not a fan of the frigid and snowy weather. At the beginning of the month, I did a Morse Code of Weather segment showing these three years, and I said 2022 December was going to be very similar to 2008's December, 2010, and 2016's December which also favored very frigid temperatures and well above normal snowfall. Well, that forecast verified in a big way with our temperatures well below normal for the month of December. Snowfall at number two for all Decembers in history in Bismarck. And why was that December so cold just last month? Well, we had a lot of teleconnections or jet stream patterns across the globe come together to constructively allow our jet stream to dip very far south here locally and give us very cold weather and stormy weather. Of course, we're on a record setting pace for snowfall with 2022 to now 2023 being at the top of the list for the most snow on record through this point in the snow season. And our December high temperatures, as you look at the month as a whole, of course, aided by that week of sub-zero temperatures. It was the coldest December on record since 2013. So in almost a decade, we had a very frigid December there and a very cold December as well. So I, like I said, it all relates to these global teleconnections, jet stream patterns all around the world that are all connected back to our weather. These Rosby waves, when you look at the jet stream, how it flows, how it meanders, you can get either zonal uh, flow that doesn't really uh, allow for very interesting weather or allow for very cold Arctic outbreaks to dip south or meridional flow where you have big dips in the jet stream, these cold splotches of air to dip a lot farther south, give us those Arctic outbreaks and allow for a much stronger storm system to develop in this part of the world. These teleconnections, here's a whole list of them. There's acronyms for them as we have a lot of acronyms in the meteorological community. But these four are some of the main ones that we focus on here in North Dakota because they happen in the Pacific Ocean. And with weather moving west to east, these teleconnections in the Pacific Ocean can have downstream effects here in the western and central United States. So the PNA is one of them that we look at pretty closely, the Pacific North American pattern. The negative phase of the PNA favors colder than normal temperatures here. The PNA was very firmly negative in December, delivering us those cold temperatures. Also, we're in a triple dip La Nina, meaning the third year in a row with La Nina present, where there is colder than normal sea surface temperatures in the Pacific Ocean. That also means colder than normal weather here in the Northern Plains usually. So let's look at these three years that I referred to before. We're looking at 2008, 2010, and this past December, uh, 2022. Look at these teleconnection phases. Are they positive or are they negative? It's like a slot machine. All of them lined up negative, and that's why I really highlighted these years were, were going to be similar to our 2022 December. We had the La Nina phase of that ENSO teleconnection. So again, all of these lined up. That's why all of these Decembers were very cold. Now let's look ahead to the next month. In 2009 and 2011, the January of that year, it was very cold and it continued to be very snowy. And taking this a little bit further into the future, when you take these cold Decembers, bring them into 20, uh, 2009 and 2011, they continue to be cold and snowy. In fact, in the top 10 snowiest on record as you went through the end of winter and even into the beginning of May. This year, we're obviously going to see a little bit of a break here in January, at least for the first half of the month. But I think as we get later in the winter, there could be that uptick in moisture as well as those cold temperatures like we saw in 2009 and 2011. One of the reasons is because of that La Nina. The La Nina is favored to weaken a little bit and we could get to the other phase of that teleconnection, El Nino, as we go through the uh, year 2023. This is similar to what happened in 2009 when we transitioned to that neutral phase of this teleconnection uh, uh, then eventually into El Nino. Another reason is because the PNA right now is positive. If you remember, the negative phase of these teleconnections usually favors colder than normal temperatures here in the Northern Plains. But right now the PNA is positive after we had that really cold December. Eventually this PNA is going to go back to negative and that's when I think we could see that flip back to those much colder than normal temperatures, Arctic outbreaks, a lot more snow as we get farther into the second half of winter. The Pacific Decadal Oscillation, a little bit more of a slower moving teleconnection is also firmly negative and that favors colder than normal temperatures. The Arctic Oscillation also in the negative phase right now and that will allow for some colder 
uh, Arctic outbreaks to come down into our area eventually as we get into the second half of winter. But for now in January, it's definitely a change compared to what we saw in December with near normal or above normal temperatures favored and possibly some lower than normal precipitation amounts as we don't have that strong of a signal here in North Dakota compared to a stronger signal of above normal precipitation like we saw in December. So let's take this out a few months into the future. This is January, February, and March, still favoring colder than normal temperatures, and even into February, March, and April. So we could have that cold linger as we get into that second half of winter. And the precipitation outlooks also pretty favoring for above normal precipitation as we get into the second half of winter. So yeah. we might have a little bit of a break here in January, at least for the first to middle part of the month, but into February, March, maybe lingering into April, cold and snow might return. Bookends winter. We've been talking about that. Yeah. Starting rough, mild the middle, rough maybe to end things. So we're in, in that middle stage. Enjoy the next couple of weeks. <laughs> El Nino, if it comes back next winter, it's been a while, that sure. would mean a milder winter most of the time. So something to look forward to. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll next think year. about that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jacob. Yeah.